Welcome back, FUD Nation. Now today, if you're anything like me, you woke up with one question on your mind. Is Ronald McDonald Satoshi Nakamoto? Introducing Mac Coin, a global currency for a global icon, the Big Mac. In 50 years, the Big Mac has traveled the globe, but kept what made it famous. The same Big Mac at McDonald's worldwide, so universal, the economist uses it to compare currencies. So, for its 50th anniversary, it becomes one. A food bank currency. Ronald, you evil genius! McDonald's starting a cryptocurrency worth Big Macs? Is it genius? Yes. Is it crypto? No. No, it's not. Though I will be investing heavily at this point in time, it does not seem like McDonald's is a direct threat to Bitcoin or Ethereum. Moving on. This week, Tron got us very excited for what could be some of the most massive, most groundbreaking, most breathtaking, most game-changing news in the history of the, tr of the Tron. And to all of our surprise, it was... It was just their partnership with BitTorrent. Even though Tron's partnership with BitTorrent may have been more than expected, given that this rumor and the sort of knowledge that Justin Sun had purchased BitTorrent has been circulating the interwebs now for months, the actual official announcement that they're going to be integrating Tron in with BitTorrent and essentially paying people to seed files. So after you download something on BitTorrent, there's supposedly no real advantage or no real incentive to seed the file or to keep uploading the file, letting others download it. They're going to start rewarding the people who seed the files who allow for others to download with Tron TRX. We'll see how this all plays out. There's some doubts as to how easy this is going to be. Obviously, if you're talking to me, I don't see there as being any problem with BitTorrent and seeding. BitTorrent works really well. It's always worked really well and that there's not really any need for that incentive. But who knows, maybe this incentive and the integration with Tron and the sort of optimization of BitTorrent by using the Tron platform will give it a new lease on life and of course bring many users into the Tron TRX platform. But thankfully, that wasn't the only announcement from Tron that we got this week. Would have been honestly a little disappointing if it were, but we actually got word that Tron has launched its virtual machine. There were a lot of announcements around this virtual machine, so we'll go through those right now. First and foremost, the Tron virtual machine will be compatible with Ethereum, which essentially means that Ethereum dApps and developers will easily be able to port over their work to the Tron ecosystem if they so choose to. We've seen it in the Nebulous project, we've seen it in the Cardano project, which we'll talk about in a second, and now we're seeing it with Tron. Obviously, for a base layer protocol like Tron, having development on top of it is critical. That's why their partnerships with Baofeng, Obike, Gifto, and etc., etc., are very important. But of course, user-friendly development tools and cultivating a community of developers is very important. And obviously, Tron is meant to appeal to millennials, and they're obviously focused a lot on gaming and stuff like that. They also announced that they're going to be working with game engine creators like Unity and Unreal, and you know, there's a lot of them. But essentially, the goal is to limit the amount of transactions per second required to run a game so that you're not constantly pinging transactions, but that TPS or transactions can be settled at the end of a game or at the end of a day. Essentially, the effect of batching these transactions would be that you would allow for a lot more TPS or a lot more transactions, a lot more support for the network, and this would allow for more complex dApps and especially more complex video games. They even take Loom Network as an example. Obviously, Loom Network has been pushing Plasma technology in general and sidechains for Ethereum, so this is definitely, you can see what they're trying to do. They even said they're going to reach out to Loom Network and see if they want to build a Tron Loom. I don't know. Loom seems pretty intertwined with the Ethereum infrastructure and the Ethereum community, so I don't know how successful that'll be. But you see Justin Sun and the Tron team is really fearless in what they're going to tackle. I have to give them credit for always being unafraid to go and tackle any problems and kind of put themselves out there and try to really achieve whatever goals any other blockchain is trying to achieve. So whether or not it was more or less a nothing burger to announce that they are integrating BitTorrent as everybody knew that was going to happen. I'm still pretty pleased with this announcement. I think Tron's moving their development forward. They've hit all their milestones. They've been ahead of schedule and they had a very successful migration to their mainnet that's been running smoothly since it launched. We'll certainly just have to see how this plays out as we start seeing these dApps really come to life on the Tron ecosystem. We've also got word that Bitmain is now expanding into Texas. Obviously, Texas has super cheap electricity for the United States. Recent reports showed that they made over $1 billion in profits in the first 
first quarter of 2018. This is a monstrous, monstrous enterprise. And we all know that Jihan Wu and the Bitmain fam are really mining on the side and not reporting it all and hiding that a little bit. So God knows how much money and power they are wielding. Bitmain is truly a superpower of the new economy. We've also just gotten word that Northern Trust has been deeply intertwined with the blockchain and cryptocurrency world. And they've actually been pushing forward, not just blockchain technology, but also investments into cryptocurrency. And this is huge because Northern Trust manages $11.7 trillion in assets. They're a wealth management company. And so if you thought that BlackRock was a big deal, you can go ahead and almost double it. And that's what you're getting with Northern Trust. And unlike BlackRock, they're not just exploring cryptocurrencies. They're fully moving into the sector as well as blockchain in general with multiple patents. All right, so I did misspeak. It's actually $10.7 trillion in assets under custody, but that's still huge for an investment firm moving into the space. So they're not actually investing directly into cryptocurrencies. They're helping their clients take custody of their own cryptocurrencies. But nonetheless, they have a minimum investment of $100 million to even be represented by Northern Trust. This is ultra high net worth individuals. So this is a big deal when you have people that are worth 100 mil or more moving into cryptocurrencies. They don't make small bites. They don't make small buys. These are just one or two Bitcoin. Coins. They're getting many, many coins when they move into the space. Beyond just investments into cryptocurrency, they're doing some very interesting and novel work in blockchain itself. According to the CEO, they've actually developed two unique patents, one that allows for identity management, which allows for someone to essentially validate their identity. And the other one extends transactions beyond buying and selling of the securities to actual board meeting and votes. So now they can automate through blockchain the actual sort of administration of different businesses and assets. This is a big deal and it really, for their business, helps accelerate a lot of decision-making processes and really make things efficient and streamlined through the blockchain. This is very novel, and especially for them, I think this is pushing forward the use of blockchain technology as it pertains to private asset classes, private, you know, sort of institutional enterprise utilities for blockchain and have a $10.7 trillion company or trillion dollar asset management company really pushing forward not just understanding and investing and throwing money into the cryptocurrency space, opening their clients up and their portfolios up to crypto hedge funds and the like, but also innovating within the blockchain space. And to me, it really spells out that we're really entering into this new era where powers that be, if you will, are starting to take this technology seriously and that they're actually going to start trying to set the pace here for using this in a way to accelerate their business practices, which I know is the sort of enterprise blockchain applications that everybody's really been waiting for. Unlike Ethereum developers and other people that are trying to push forward private blockchain usage, this is actually an entity that has so many private usages that they can just apply it to. So they're not going out and finding clients. They're building things for their already existing clients and that's very exciting. We've just gotten word that Ripple is now tapping Bill Clinton for a keynote address at an upcoming conference, sort of continuing their reliance on influencers and celebrities to spread knowledge of their product. To me, I, I guess I just don't really like the idea of relying on celebrities to spread word about your product. You shouldn't be constantly paying celebrities to make appearances and represent your cryptocurrency and your product. I just don't like it. Obviously, this is Ripple. Maybe he's not going to be talking about XRP, but at any rate, I just personally really don't like this constant reliance on celebrity endorsers and influencers. Honestly, the only coins that really rely on that are scams. When's the last time you heard Ethereum tapping a celebrity or Stellar Lumens tapping a celebrity or Neo tapping a celebrity or EOS tapping a celebrity? Nobody does that except Ripple and like the ICO scams that Floyd Mayweather promotes. So I don't know. I don't really like this. Moving on. Cardano just launched its second testnet for smart contracts today called Iela, I-E-L-E. I-E-L-E, Yella, old Yella. The point is now that you can start testing smart contracts within the Cardano framework. This is exciting. They're moving their tech forward and it's supposed to be very much so built in a way that the traditional bugs or the real most serious of bugs within smart contracts are going to be so that you can't even build these out. You can't even run them properly. It sort of catches your mistakes before you make them. Obviously, Charles Hoskinson is deep in the sort of academia of building these decentralized networks. And so hopefully this is a step forward as far as the technology is concerned. We'll just have to see how it plays out. This is email that post somebody posted on Reddit. I'm going to skip to the good part. I've poisoned a number of adult websites with my malware that steals all the data from the devices and obtains an access to its webcams and lots more. And today I have a clip of you wanking it and a clip you jerked it to. And in addition, all of your contacts. 
It's your work address, which I've located on your device, by the way. Oh yeah, I've also edited the clip to fit to on a single TV screen. Therefore, it's going to be much more comfy to watch for everyone. Anyways, if you need me to erase all your contact info with the video itself, here's my BTC wallet address. 450 is the total in dollars I need to leave you alone completely. You know what's really comforting about this to me is that someone's finally scamming with Bitcoin again. What's the deal with everyone scamming in ETH? I just don't get it. Like, why can't anybody just scam in Bitcoin? Scam in Bitcoin. Come on, be old fashioned. Please excuse my rant, but this tweet by Vitalik Buterin came out a couple days ago and it circulated the internet so fast, so many times it made your head spin. It's all over Reddit. It was all over every social media network, even like LinkedIn and stuff. Vitalik here is trying to say, I think there's too much emphasis on BTC, ETH, whatever ETFs, and not enough emphasis on making it easier for people to buy five to $100 in cryptocurrency cards at corner stores. The former is much better for pumping price, but the latter is much better for actual adoption. Now, I honestly, with love in my heart and respect for everything Vitalik Buterin does, humbly disagree with what he's saying here. I think the opposite is true. The ability to spend five to $100 at a corner store would accelerate adoption, but the ability to buy five to ten dollars like a cryptocurrency scratcher card, and then how would you get it to yourself? Does it create a new wallet address? Do you just upload it onto your current wallet? Do you like how does this work? You know, and can you spend it straight from that card, or do you have to then transfer it and use it? I don't, honestly, Vitalik doubled down a few times in this thread saying that it would be used to pay fees for dApps within dApps, but what dApps? Who uses any dApps, no offense, on Ethereum? Nobody. So I guess what I have a problem here is that this from a quote unquote innovator of our time is to me like the equivalent of a crypto scratcher and is one of the least innovative ideas I've ever heard. And I think it doesn't do anything for adoption. You can disagree with me, but I honestly was just supremely disappointed by seeing this tweet and everybody going, oh, Vitalik's so smart. I'm like this to me is just a whiny comment about people being interested in price action when a lot of people are down a lot of money on some of the investments they made or expecting to have a little bit more growth from different business models they've created. I don't think there's anything wrong with hoping for price action. So tell me if you disagree, but I just think that this is absolutely not the way forward. And it's certainly not an innovative idea that's going to create massive cryptocurrency adoption. I humbly disagree. We also got word that Pantera Capital has clocked over 10,000% gains since its creation five years ago. What's funny though, is that if you actually just calculate the amount of gains that Bitcoin experienced in that time period, it's something like 9,500%. So it's almost the exact same amount of gains if you would have just bought and held Bitcoin, really calling into question the validity of having hedge funds that do all this risky sort of diversified investing. But regardless, good for Pantera. It's a big win and it just shows that the cryptocurrency space is worth investing into, even if all you're doing is buying and holding Bitcoin and getting most of the gains that way. Pundi X is also going to roll out their POS system across Asia. Just more good news for Pundi X, which we've been hearing a lot of good stuff about. HTC is also going to be integrating Litecoin and Lightning Network into their new phone. Very bullish and exciting stuff for them. And Everix blockchain just opened a payment corridor between Myanmar and Thailand, allowing for migrant workers to make easy cross-border remittances, which is helping bank the unbanked and essentially creating a PayPal-esque or a very simple peer-to-peer -peer money transfer system, at least across these two fiat zones. And this is one of their first experiments in the cross-border remittance space. It's a very cool project, Everix, and they've just signed a very monumental deal here, essentially allowing for migrant workers between Myanmar and Thailand to very easily transfer money to each other. So you should check this project out as they're doing a lot of good things in the cross-border remittance space. And I'm always been passionate about crypto to fiat on ramps being broken. And it's very exciting whenever you can see a blockchain project pushing forward the envelope as far as it's concerned with cross border remittances, which is a huge issue in our modern world. And finally, here's the state of our current bull run sleeping, not dead, but sleeping. Wake up soon, little buddy. Wake up soon. If you enjoyed today's episode of FUD TV and you're not already subscribed to this channel, I encourage you to hit that sub button and don't be afraid to click that little bell notification so you're made aware whenever we put out new content. I'm Elio Trades, you're watching FUD TV, and I'll see you very, very soon in the next episode.